So that would be an extended metaphor. Struggle boat, struggle sea, struggle island, struggle land, all of those things. Uh, I haven't checked to see if this will let me draw today. So, um, remember, we're trying to do things a little bit differently. You don't need me to go through word by word and point to exact translation because you already have that video with Fast Talkers. So what I'm trying to focus more on is I went back and I was looking over your test grades and stuff like that again, and I noticed that we're not actually achieving our objectives the way we've been doing things. So I'm going to actively try to shift how we handle our class time, all right, which is not redoing what you've already done watching the video, right? Okay, so whether that is helpful, it doesn't, based on your test scores, they're not always like abysmal, but based on your test scores, I would say that has not been the most helpful thing that we could use our class time doing. Is that an accurate assessment of this last semester situation? We can always go back, it's, it's not a big deal. So the point is, I'm trying to make sure that we are actively thinking about what we need and when we need it. Um, I am sad to be out of book two. Some passages that I realized as I was telling the story to Latin ones that they cut out that we used to translate that I'm really sad we don't translate anymore. Um, Aeneas witnessing Neoptolemus kill Priam and Aeneas finding his wife's ghost in Troy. Our, they, well, you're supposed to read them in English, but we no longer translate them. But whenever we, we you know, so um, hang on, pause. Uh, so our our previous finish curriculum date was August or April August April sixth. Um, I went and figured out when I want the song projects due. So everything has been shifted down two days to now. We'll be done with all of our content April eighth. One of the things we can do is we can go back and review by picking out different passages, and that those would definitely be passages that are up. So just help me try to help. I know I know. Like when we get to April, you're like, oh my goodness, how am I going to have enough? But you know, if I'm like, what do we want to do with our time now? That's definitely passages that we could go back and pick up. And it would be excellent practice and excellent review of material and new material and sight reading and all of these different things. So that is actually why we have been really, really driving hard to get done with all of the content on time. Like I know it feels early, but that's actually on time because then that gives us a good six weeks to review and reinforce skills without trying to like make sure that you've covered everything for the AP test, because we've already covered everything for the AP test, so then it's just a matter of honing skills with the knowledge that you have. Okay, so those are passages that we definitely will want to try to remember to do. Um, arm, arm, arm. Oh, I finally saw Rise of Skywalker last night, and I am heartbroken. Broken. Good or bad way. I don't even know yet. Still just, like, actually depressed. Um, but anyways, that's a different story. Just thought I'd let you know. So we're back into Caesar, book five. I am not going to take the time to make this line up with your booklet. I'm sorry. I'll kind of eyeball it. Is that good? Maybe? A little bit over. It's. That's is that better? That's cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. closer. Okay, all right, cool, cool. Actually, that's not well. It's it's good. Pretty Actually, close. That's exact. Is no, it really? It's not exact. But Isn't it? It's not yes, it is. Word. The first word is exact. Oh, yeah, the first. Word. Yeah, they're actually. Wait, hold up. I think it's pretty exact. Yeah, it's exact. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But now well, it's now wrong. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. How about now? No. no. Uh, it has to go into N at the end. N. Okay. Yep. There? Uh, oh, actually, yeah. you could go a little bit more, but whatever. There? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much? Okay. Uh, more or less. Fine. Good. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I'm sad because we had it exact and then I made it a different size. Uh, okay. Close enough. Give us room to write and draw and scribble. We want to be able to see. It doesn't do us any good. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, it can be perfect, it. but if you can't see okay, it, it yeah. doesn't matter. So whatever, it's close enough. We'll figure it out. Seriously? This thing is obnoxious. Just so many reasons why Virgil is better than Caesar. You can go to the beginning of each line. 
Yeah. That's what she was doing when she was like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to figure out how to make it do it for me quickly. Lion's Maybe. facing. 500. <laughs> He's 42. There we go. Uh, nah, it's it's gonna say COVID. <laughs> 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 okay. So, and then I'm gonna mess everything up because I'm gonna unplug this and go over there. Um, there we go. So, this particular passage, um, remember when we left off, but right before winter break, we had just concluded the Sabinus versus Kata storyline, okay? And remember, we talked about that at length, how Caesar depicts Kata as this military genius, sort of a Cassandra figure, always right, never listened to. Yes? Everybody good with that reference? In fact, if I were you and that came up with the Kata, I would make sure to compare, her, compare him to Cassandra and just be like, like the ill-fated Cassandra of the Trojan War, always right, never believed. You know, you could get a lot of extra points for contextual understanding um, with Kata. And then Sabinus, I don't even, there's no one to compare Sabinus to. He's kind of, a kind of, yeah. Real special, yeah. Um, anyways, so they both died. Uh, remember, Sab uh, Sabinus was actually murdered by Ambiorix himself while he went up to be like, Ambiorix, I thought you were our friend. And Ambiorix was like, of course you can negotiate a surrender and surrounded him and then killed him and all of his men. And Kata died gloriously on the battlefield. He took a, he took a slingshot to the face and he still kept fighting and then he died in battle. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Last I looked, uh, the translation for... I fixed it. Oh. Yes. So there was a translation. The translation for today was set up so that you could submit it. Um, I fixed it. So, yes. It should. And if it still, still doesn't work, please let me know. Uh, remember, the reason I don't have you do a text box entry is because you should never trust the Canvas text box. <laughs> never, ever. So I just don't even give you the option to. So it's a pile up. Yeah. Yes. Don't ever trust the Canvas. Um, text box when Google saves it as you go. T shirt. <laughs> indeed, indeed. My pen is still not working. Uh, do you need to connect to the Well, uh, it should all automatically connect. I just I don't know what's going on with it. I forgot that I needed to fix it yesterday because I was I was excited about seeing Rise of Skywalker and then I was heartbroken. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, I don't want to go through and um, and go over it word by word translation because Fast Talker does that and he does a really good job of that. That's why I give you his videos. Okay, but I do want to make sure that we understand things from with me on like a deeper level. For an, um, and one of the review things we might do is I haven't been giving you the initial explorations. Fours know what that is. Threes are like I don't know what that is, and fours are just like Oh my God, I'm so glad I don't have to do that because it's, they're very useful. It's basically like reading comprehension questions, but for each passage. Um, and they come from Perry, which I don't know where Perry is right now. Mm, nope, I don't know where Perry is right now. So I only have the answers. I don't actually have the question. <laughs> so um, summaries for this particular book. Ambiorix took his cavalry with them, ordered the infantry to follow, and did not stop for one night and one day. Uh, Ambiorix explained the situation and stirred up the Aduatuki. Ambiorix encouraged the Nervii not to lose the opportunity of freezing, freeing themselves forever and getting revenge on the Romans for the wrongs they had endured. He had explained, meaning Ambiorix, he had explained to the Nervii that two legates had been killed and a larger part of the army had perished. Who were the two legates? Kata and Sabinus, right? and the larger part of the army had perished. Ambiorix claimed that it would not be difficult suddenly to overwhelm and kill the legion that was wintering with Cicero. He offered to help the Nervii accomplish this, so Ambiorix easily persuaded the Nervii through his speech. So that's just kind of the summary, if you will, um, based on the uh, initial exploration questions in Perry. We might start doing more of that with the end of book five, because it kind of, it's not that it, just, this is actually one of the more interesting stories for me. Um, I know I complain about Caesar and how boring he is, and he is, 
But this is one of the more interesting ones. We have all kinds of different snafus that, you know, like when you're in a movie and you're looking for anything to be exciting, this is kind of where, like, they're trying to get a message into the camp and they put it on an, on an arrow or a spear and they throw it into the camp, but it gets stuck on a roof. <laughs> and you're like, ah! So, <laughs> are they going to find the message? They do, just late. Um, but anyways, so a discussion... Hawk Victoria to Blaches of York's starting from Equitatu Aduartugis. Again, I don't have Perry to have the questions, but the answer that Perry provides for the discussion is Caesar uses an adulative absolute consisting of four words to show how quickly Ambiorix enlisted the Aduartuki in his cause before moving on to the Nervii. So, up here at the beginning, I believe, Re demonstrata, right here. Yes? Oh, it draws now. Re demonstrata adua tukis que conquitati. So with this thing having been demonstrated and with the adua tuki having been conquitated. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what it means, but conquitated. Yes? It probably has something to do with convincing because that's what's happening in this. Yes? Remember, who should move on? Yes? Okay, so conquitated um, on the previous day. Then he came and he urged on the nervi. So remember, Caesar loves his ablet of absolutes, yes? Okay. And in fact, if you don't understand Ablet of Absolutes, you're kind of up a creep. So let's take a minute to stop and review Ablet of Absolutes. So, the rule. You have to have an ablative. I would say about 95% of the time, you have some form of participle with some noun, usually, because a participle, remember, is just a verbal adjective. Is all of this sounding familiar? Remember participle, verbal adjective, just like in mom is an adjective, dad is a verb, just like the kid in Sky High, he has both superhero powers. Yes? So participle functions as an adjective and a noun. So what happens is you put the participle with the noun, and when it's a perfect passive participle, for example, the formula always comes out to with the noun having been verbed. Yes? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you've seen this lots and lots and lots of times. But obviously this is ablative and this is ablative and that's how we know they go together. And the main characteristic of an ablative absolute is it should be absolutely disconnected from the grammar of the rest of the sentence. If it's not, then technically it's not an ablative absolute. But it always tells us some kind of circumstance. Okay? With Baby Yoda having been rescued, Mandalorian can go about his adventures. Yes? Okay? Does with Baby Yoda having been rescued have anything to do with the grammar of the Mandalorian went about his adventures? No. No. It does not. Does it give me more circumstances for when the Mandalorian went about his adventures? Yes. Yes. With the dogs having been fed, I went to bed. What? Yes. So, right? Okay. So, the dogs having been fed have no grammatical bearing on me going to bed, but clearly I can't go to bed until I feed the dogs. Yes? Uh, I'm trying really hard to stay away from the morbid, and, and, and I'm actually somewhat succeeding. Just go ahead. <laughs> Well, it, it's okay. We talked about, uh, what was it, torturing people in English, so it's fine. <laughs> what? Alright, with the like, babies having uh, been killed, the pharaoh thought the Jewish population right. would be under control. Oh, there you go, Old Testament, Jewish Bible. I remember yes. that. Okay, with the, pharaoh, with the babies having been killed, the pharaoh thought the Jewish population would be under control. Little did he know, that's not an apple of absolute. Okay, so the <laughs> other, the other 5% of the time, so participle plus noun. You can also have a present active participle plus a noun. And that's a little bit different. So it's with the noun verbing. And I don't really have a good example of this because that's a small percentage of the 95% of the ablative absolutes. But with the sun shining, I lay down in the grass to take a nap. 
right? So that would be like um, sole cadente. That's not falling. That's not shining. That's falling. Wait, we'll just use this with the sun twinkling. We can't see. Yes, that's not actually the right word either. The, the sun falling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, wait. I'll like the sun falling. Oh. <laughs> okay, so with the sun shining, I lie down to take a nap. With the moon hanging in the sky, Romeo talked too much about how Juliet is the sun. <laughs> Okay, all right, and uh, then the other 5% of the time, you can actually just have a noun. Oh. Yeah, and just have a noun as an ablative. And like I said, this is a very, very small percentage of the time, like 5% of the time. It happens so little of the time, I can't even think of an example for you. Brains. I don't even know. I don't even know. I only know that it can happen. Like, you can have an ablative single word absolute that is just a noun. And I don't know, I don't even know that I've ever seen an example of it, which is why I'm saying, like, the one up here with a participle, that happens, like, 95% of the time. And the other 5% of the time, you might see just a noun in the ablative. Okay? It's <clears throat> different noun. There are other ways to translate ablative absolutes. I like this formula because you're always going to get to the right place. Okay? So you'll see translations translated like after the dogs were killed, then they went into the house. Okay? You'll see. But it's with the dogs having been killed, the burglars entered the house. Yes? Okay? That's actually like, that is what it says. I like to translate ablative absolutes ablatively. Yes, which is the with. Mm -hmm. All right, and that will always get you. You could say, sometimes they say sense, sometimes they although. A lot of times translations treat it like a coon clause. And I don't like it. Because it's not a coon clause, it's an ablative of absolute. Which is probably why Latin, ha Latin and Latin teachers have a reputation for being a little bit pretentious and persnickety. It's like, no, don't translate it that way. That would be a coon clause. And you clearly have an ablative of absolute. And so you should translate it ablatively, and not as if it were a circumstantial who thought. <laughs> 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 remember now, we were talking about torturing prisoners of war. That's what we were talking about. Oh, yes, that's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> we, were talk we were talking about, like, if it's good or bad based on different argumentative lenses. Geneva Code says bad, no black or white. Like, no, yeah. no gray area. I, I agree with Geneva Code. Bad. Anyways, okay. Uh, the Romans don't even like it when their prisoners of war are sent under the yoke. Like, he'll do whatever they want with their actual prisoners of war. They'll parade them through the city and humiliate them, but that's a different story. Anyways, okay, so back to 38. Back to 538. Um, so, Hortatur, everybody see this right here? And it should be marked as a verb. If it isn't, then Fast Talker is falling down on the job, and I do need to go back in and do his job a little bit better. But everybody good, but this is from the verb portor, portari, okay? And it means to urge, urge, urge. It means to urge on, okay, to urge on. It is actually where we get one of our kinds of subjunctives called the hortative subjunctive. Mm -hmm. It's the one where you use first person and you're like, let us do this, and you're urging them on. It's like hortatory subjunctive is the subjunctive of the commander on the front lines. It's like, let us live or let us die like men, right? That would be hortatory subjunctive, because he's urging them on and like, if we die, we die together. Yes, let us die. Okay, so that would be, it's a form of justice subjunctive, but it's a hortatory subjunctive. So it's yeah. where you are urging everyone on to come with you and die along. Okay, it's not, obviously it's not always dying, but it, it normally is. Um, at least that's what I'm going with for why all of my examples are dying. Um, but everybody good with deponent? Okay, so tell me about deponent verbs. What's weird about deponent verbs? 
They look passive, but translate active. Very good. Pronouns, verbs. They look passive, translate active. What it really means is if you get in trouble and I make you do a full synopsis for punishment, if I pick a deponent, you have half as many forms. Yes? <laughs> That's what it means. All right, look, passive, translate, active. We have some, we have some, some of the common ones. Um, I might actually have a Quizlet list. If I do, I'll, I'll post that and maybe even make a game of it so that you can go and play with that. But like Konor, Konari, Konatusum. Do you guys remember this one? You know what it means? That's good. It means to try. Watch me get these wrong. Okay. Uh, exterior is one of the words that means to test. Exterior, exterior, I think. Expertus. Soon. I could be wrong. This could be experi. Question mark. Yeah. I'll have to go look that one up later. All right, that's to try. That's where we get expert. An expert is a person having tried. Yes? Yes, not having been tried. Like, you're having to <laughs> test, right? Or test. You can say test. Test, try, experiment. Okay? Two of my favorites. These are the ones that I tell, I've been telling you since Latin 1. Spelling matters, right? We have moror. And we have morior. Moror. Yeah. Uh -huh. Morari, moratus sum, I can spell, just like I tell you, you guys have to, moratus sum, morior, I think it's mori, what was it, moriri, ah, it's a third or fourth, I can't remember, mortus sum, I remember that one, that one is definitely mortus, okay, so this one means to delay, or to wait, no, wait. Well, there's another word that means delay, but delay, wait. Okay? And this one means to die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> more to us. Yes, there is where we get more to. All right, let me check these out. That's my kind of crazy. We did, I think. Yeah. We did. Yeah, I remember. That it. was a, that was one of the things I remember. And then I got forgot. Hello, Steven. Whoa, you're looking slick. Uh my trial? Yes. yes. Say Mr. Horn and uh, I don't actually know if it's part of the actual uniform or if they're just like it is Mori. Expire. And then expire. It is experiri, and it does mean to test or to try. I like it when my brain remembers things correctly. <laughs> experiri, I'm sorry, not experiri, experiri. Because it looks passive, right? Yeah. And that is correct. Mori or mori. So this one is first conjugation, and this one is first conjugation, and this one is fourth, and this one is third. I don't actually have a second. I can't think of a second. Let me think of a second. Where are you? Where are you? Yes. So lots of Latin words. Okay. So where are you? You can see the EO, yes, which is what you expect from second conjugation verbs. Where are Ready to assume, and it means, should mean to fear. Yes, to revere, to respect, to fear, to dread. Like revere. And that's where we get the word revere. Okay, so deponent verbs look passive, translate active. That just means that you use the Irish tour, Meridian tour for forms on all of them. <coughs> for infinitives, you only have the passive one. 
and you only have fourth, the fourth principal part, which is actually the third principal part here, plus the form of the verb to be. Where do is second conjugation. Yes, verbs, conjugation. No, you're good. One of the most commonly mixed up forms. I had a friend that would come to Kirtaman practice with me after school, so she knew a lot of Latin, and then her junior year she decided to go ahead and take Latin, but she was taking it with Natmog, a different teacher that we had at the time, and he kept mixing up trans or conjugations and declensions, and he would say, yes, that's first conjugation, and Virginia would go, declension? <laughs> and she would just be like, and he'd be like, ah! And she'd be like, I'm sorry, say it right, I won't have to help you. <laughs> She's pretty sassy. She was a junior walking all the way to the freshman academy. She was not pleased. Whoa. Yes. Okay. So those are deponents. Um, quas. Oh, okay. So he explains that. So you see all of this here would be in direct statement. Yes? Interfectos esse. Interesse. Okay, um, so he demonstrates that. Okay, so demonstrates is going to trigger indirect statement, which is why you got an infinitive here and an infinitive here. Okay, so remember whenever we're in indirect statement, we're looking for an accusative subject. Yes, so this would be another accusative subject. And then this, everybody good with this, is genitive fourth declension, exercitus, of the army. And I see a bunch of these relative pronouns that I wish I were a little bit more prepared and could tell you what's going on with them, because I feel like they're going to come up in questions. Let me see. Do you have a question? No. Okay, just stretching? No. Cool, cool. I could be wrong. And those particular pronouns could be not important at all. It happens. Anyways, remember anytime you see cool, you're trying to just, you need to be thinking about, okay, how am I going to translate that? All right, so it's cool picarone. Uh, so it could be with Cicero, and it is, because this is ablative, so this is a prepositional phrase. Okay? Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. So then quai, oh my goodness, this sentence is complicated. It says, it says, um, okay, so Chidi Book says, it is no great task for the legion which is wintering with Cicero after being suddenly overwhelmed to be killed. Okay, so this is indeed a passive infinitive. Did he talk about that in his video at all? So let's go ahead and talk about infinitives again. Okay, so infinitives. Remember, infinitives take their cue from take their cue from the main verb. So there's only three tenses of the infinitives, right? There is present, which is happening at the same time as the main verb. Okay, there is perfect, which was finished before the main verb, and then there is future, which happens after the main verb. Right. So in the timeline. Present lines up with the main verb, whatever tense that may be. And then you have future, and then you have perfect. Yes? Everybody with me? Okay. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. Don't worry, I'm going to write the same thing. I'm just going to give myself more room. Present, perfect, and future. We do have active and passive. Okay, so the present infinitive is the one that ends in RE. Yes? 
Latin one. And then you start seeing it in like chapter five. Nekes A.S. R.E. Yes, it is necessary. They start throwing that at you really, really soon because it's really important to be able to identify that R.E. infinitive. Okay? Now, the passive, that R.E. changes to either an R.I. or for third conjugation, just to an I, which is what's actually happening with interficky. Okay? Interficky from the verb interficio, one of the many verbs that means to kill. Interficio, interficera, interficky, and then I believe it should be interfectus. Okay. All right. So this is the part that means to kill. Everybody see this is a short E. Short little wimpy E. Yes, I remember that. Okay. That means that this is third conjugation. Which means that whenever we're making it passive, We drop off the entire ERE and just make it interficky. Not to be confused with interfaky. They did not invite me to any of the meetings where they decided to do these things. If they had, I would have been like, don't you remember the look of eating? Don't you think we should make it look different? They didn't ask me. Okay? So interfigura means to kill, interficky means to be killed. Are you with me? Everything else is a lot easier. First goes from amare to amari, for example, from to love to, to be loved. Um, habeo goes, or habera, I'm sorry, goes from habera to haberi, from to hold to be held. Yes. And then um, Audira, that's a good one. Audira is fourth. So it goes from Audira to here. Audiri to be heard. Too much too fast? Are you guys okay? Good with you? Yes? So that's what's going on with interficky right here. Yes? And that's how you know it's a present passive infinitive. Okay. And why, you do need to know, why the antecedent would be the legion, yes? Okay. So it is nothing for the negotiated legion or for the oppressed legion. 